So I recently saw the new previews for Space Marine 2, specifically the IGN preview. And you know, IGN is definitely one of the most unbiased game reviewers and intelligent sources of gaming journalism. No fucking way, man. This is not worth $100 that I- No, IGN bought. gave it a 9. They gave it a 9. No fucking they way! They gave it a 9. You're a fucking liar! Ignoring that, when I clicked and watched this preview, it was actually fine. But some of the criticisms about the melee combat that were said really grinded my gears. And I think those are the same criticisms that can be applied to other games in the hack and slash genre. Because the Space Marine games are kind of attached to that genre. They combine third person shooter combat with hack and slash elements. So it really makes you wonder if the reviewer has ever played an action oriented video game in their life. So let's get started with my gripes with this preview. At times the controls can get a little clunky, especially on a controller. But I suppose some of that comes with being an eight foot tall juggernaut coated in ceramide. No shit. I wasn't totally sold on the melee stuff, unfortunately. Carving through gaunts with a chainsword is just as exhilarating as it should be, but Space Marine 2 has also tried to implement a Sekiro-esque system of telegraphed dodges and parries to counter enemy special attacks, and I'm not quite sure if it works here. So out of all the comparisons of games that have dodging and parrying, why Sekiro? Parry and dodging systems have become a staple in most action-adventure games, and I can think of many titles that have released before Sekiro that have had parrying systems. You really could have just called it a parrying and dodge system. And also, I don't really think this is anything close to Sekiro, as Sekiro has pretty smooth gameplay, whereas in Space Marine, you are much heavier, which IGN even say at the start of the preview. And also, the pairing seems to be much more streamlined, something akin to God of War 2018 with the indicators, whereas in Sekiro, you really have to focus on your enemy's attacks without an indicator. More specifically, your enemy's weapon. FromSoft games usually have a steeper learning curve. And also, a big difference is if you miss or fail parry in this game, you will easily recover, whereas Sekiro is the equivalent of someone getting a sledgehammer and smashing it against your balls. But also, I don't know who is editing IGN's video, but maybe when you're actually talking about parrying, you actually show footage of you parrying and not showing you consistently failing the parry and just getting attacked. It's like if Helen Keller's ghost is working at IGN. Maybe six hours just wasn't long enough to get the feel for it yet, but I got the sense that it really slowed close combat down with canned animations breaking up the flow a bit too much. You know, we can't tell what these canned animations are from the parrying, because I don't think you've completed one perfect parry once that shows this canned animation. So I did some digging and found out that when he's talking about canned animations, he's talking about this. When you do a parry on a Tyranid and it does this animation of you slamming the Tyranid, and it's literally only two seconds. Two seconds. And it also rewards you in combat by pushing the surrounding Tyranids away from you, creating more space and stunning other Tyranids. This definitely doesn't break the flow of combat, and it's actually pretty great that other Tyranids react to you viciously slamming one of their kind. How can someone be a grown adult and have the attention span of a toddler that you can't stand a 2-3 second animation? Likewise with the Doom 2016 style finishers. The original 2011 Space Marine had finishers before Doom 2016. In fact, Space Marine 2 and Space Marine 1's executions are mostly based on the original God of War trilogy's executions. Especially with the first game, since most of the developers for Space Marine 1 actually worked on the original God of War games. Now he's also saying that like the pairing system, the executions also conflict with the flow of the game. And yeah, that's the purpose of the executions, and that also happened with other games like Doom Eternal. And really every game that has executions. And the reason why was when you're getting hoarded and overwhelmed by several enemies, doing an execution would make you invincible. So you can really think about what your next action should be. The game gives you time to think of what you should do next. And really I hate the criticism that they break the flow of gameplay, because guess what, they're optional, you don't have to do executions. Though they are gloriously brutal in their spectacle. You really can't argue with how awe-inspiring it is to see a space marine rip a tyranid warrior's head clean off and discard it like trash. Maybe they're just a bit too long, or they mess with the camera too much. I'm just gonna say this, if the executions being too long is valid criticism, then why do games like God of War 2018 that have similarly length executions don't get the same criticism? Actually, I think I know why, because they aren't long. It's really only 34 seconds, and also the fact right before you critique the executions, you praise the quality of the animation from the executions. That is really just confusing. Were you doing the execution, you were like, hey, this is pretty cool, but it's too long. Four seconds of my life, drain to God, what the fuck? 
And also, the statement that executions may conflict with the camera, I believe is just wrong. Because I remember seeing footage of the demo at the Canadian Expo of Games or whatever the fuck when some guy just recorded it on his Samsung phone. The demo showed that you can move the camera when you're doing an execution. It's not in a fixed camera position, I'm pretty sure. But they feel like breaks in the action rather than part of it. Okay, so this criticism kind of pisses me off. Because guess what? Like I said before, you don't have to do the executions. Yes, you are prompted to do one, but you don't have to do it. If a turret is in the state where you can execute it, you can just aim your bolter and just kill it. Really the only times you have to do it is to gain your white shield bar thing when you execute large enemies. Which enemies like the Tyranid warrior give you 2 bars, whereas the small regular Tyranids only give you around 1. And also perfect parries give you 1 too, so it's not like you're going to need to do them every single time you're prompted to. In the missions I played were primarily Tyranids. The Wait, wasn't that a parry? But didn't you say that the parrying slowed down the gameplay because of canned animations and it broke the flow? But you just did a parry and it wasn't a canned animation? Uh, what? Maybe you should have told the viewers that there are different forms of parrying. One with a flashing blue indicator, which does a canned animation, and one when an enemy does a general attack and you parry it, which isn't a canned animation. That as well. Anytime I got to remove an obstacle through pure super strength was a highlight. The fact that your penis got rock hard by kicking a bunch of rocks as an ultramarine, but you don't find the executions of Tyranids that amusing and you think they're too long is kinda just baffling. So yeah, they didn't like the melee combat of this game, but I believe the addition of pairing slash blocking is a good addition. In Space Marine 1, when you were getting sworn by enemies, you had like 4 options. You melee, or you shoot, or dodge, or spam a bunch of nades. And also, you weren't invincible in executions, so they were a gamble in the first game. I actually really didn't enjoy the melee combat of the first game, but I think after seeing more gameplay of the sequel, they could really improve on the combat from the first game. And now they added parrying and blocking, which adds more flexibility when you're in that situation of getting swarmed. I'm actually proud that Saber had the balls to actually add something to the gameplay that has probably improved the melee combat a lot. And it kind of feels new since I can't really think of any third person shooters that have had a pairing mechanic. That's my gripes with this IGN preview. I really wonder how IGN's full review is actually going to be because of this. Hopefully I won't have to make a video on that, which I probably won't. I'm pretty excited with Space Marine 2 since they released more footage of all the multiplayer components when we didn't even know if we were going to get a PvP mode at the start of the year. I'm still not going to pre-order it. If I ever do pre-order it, it's going to be a minimum like maybe a week before release since I can always refund it. But either way, I have more faith in this game because of the leaks. But anyways, it's kind of weird how IGN's criticisms of this game can literally be applied to a lot of the games that are deemed as perfect, and that's because I just don't believe these are flaws at all. Or they would only be flaws for someone going through one of these games for the first time. And if they're going to talk about a flaw, they should at least show a clip of that said flaw. So uh, it's been Trojan. And I, uh, I give up.